We are looking at the subject of faith. We have the word faith in those two verses and we are looking at it. Now, faith, the topic of faith or the subject of faith has become a very complicated subject even though the Bible has made it very, very simple. For years, faith seemed to be very complicated to me personally. And that's how I know it. It has become a complicated subject. But the way scripture puts it out, it is very, very simple. We have heard a slogan and we have repeated it so many times. I have repeated it. The slogan that it is one thing to talk faith, but it is another thing to have faith. It is one thing to talk faith when you're well. It's another thing to have faith when you're sick. And we have confessed and we have said that time and time and time again. And so faith seems to be one hard thing as though we have to attain to it. As though we have to struggle to it. As though we have to reach a certain level before we could get it. This is what I thought it was until the Holy Ghost has begun a work in my heart to show me that that is not what he is speaking about. Now we want to look into it and we want to look into it very simply because our Christian life depends upon it. For us to survive, it depends on this point, faith, this subject of faith. Now there are two sides to the subject of faith. One, we have what we call a sense knowledge faith or faith which operates through the physical senses sense knowledge faith or faith which operate through the physical senses and then we have the second side to the subject which is the faith of God or God kind of faith. This kind of faith, the God kind of faith is the kind that operate through the spiritual senses. Senses yes but not physical senses but spiritual senses. Okay? Now, the first one, sense knowledge. We have been told that when we walk into church and we come and sit down on the bench without testing it, it shows that we have faith. Now, what it really shows is that we have a sense knowledge faith. Because we have the physical senses to see that that bench is firm, right? We have the understanding that the ushers and the pastor would not leave a broken bench in the church and so we walk in and sit safely on the pew. Most human beings, all human beings must operate by this kind of faith, sense, knowledge, faith. That is what we use to operate in our everyday living. To sit down in the car and drive, to stop a taxi and get into it. It's sense, knowledge, faith. It is not the faith of God. It is sense, knowledge, faith that operates. Uh, Brother Anthony preached and he was explaining faith and he was talking about a man who would go to the bank and he would ask the banker for some money and the loans officer says yes he would get it by next week and the man is going to go home and he is going to build a garage. That is not the faith of God but that is sense knowledge faith based on the fact that the banker will give him the money seeing that I know and I heard and the banker spoke senses I know now that I I get the money so I am going home and begin to construct my garage. That is not the faith of God but that is sense knowledge faith. Do you understand? Is that clear? Most people and even believers sad to say operate mostly through sense knowledge faith. It is not a bad faith. It is good. It's how we have to operate. But God is calling us from that level not just to operate there, but to couple the both and to operate through the faith of God and the sense knowledge faith. But the sense knowledge faith, you need to understand when it should be operated and when it should be shut off. Do you understand? All right. 
Now, I give you some examples from scripture of some people who operated in sense, knowledge, faith. Thomas was one of them, a follower of Christ, disciple of Christ. The disciple says, man, Jesus is risen. Thomas said, I can't believe. Why? Senses. I haven't seen unless I could see unless I could and he didn't even satisfy he wasn't even satisfied to only see because probably he felt well if he must see somebody looking like Jesus that may not be him so unless I could take my hand and stick it in the nail print and on the side I can't believe sense knowledge faith he would believe but he would believe when his senses his physical senses could touch and feel and his eyes could behold only then would he accept jesus said to them blessed are they that had not seen and yet had believed you see this type of faith blinds us from the reality of god and truth this sense knowledge faith blinds us from the reality of god and truth when you try to mix that with the faith of God, you cannot mix the both. I'll explain just now what the faith of God is, but I want you to get it clear on what is sense, knowledge, faith. Now, let's look in Luke chapter 24. I want to read a portion of scripture there. Might be a little too long for me to read all, but Luke chapter 24 and verse... 15. <clears throat> Maybe I could read a little fast. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden that they should not know. This was two men who were walking on the road. They were going to the village called Emmaus. And Jesus met them and drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communication are these that he have one to another as he walk and as sad? And one of them, whose name was Cleophas, answered, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? And hast thou not known the things which are come to pass in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was was a prophet mighty indeed and word and before God and all the people and how the chief priests and all rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him but we trusted that it had been he which would have redeemed Israel and beside all this today is a third day since these things were done yes and certain women also of our company made us astonished which were early at the sepulchre and when they found not his body they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels which said that he was alive and certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it even so as the woman had said but him they saw not. Then said he unto them, O fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the days far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. Now all this time they didn't know that this is Jesus, eh? And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it, and brake it, and gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened, and they knew, and he vanished out of their sight. Now what is happening there is that these people who had to be close to Jesus because Jesus went home to spend a night with them. So it means that during Jesus' lifetime when he walked, they were with him. They heard Jesus said that I'm going to die and I'm going to rise after three days. They believed what Jesus had spoken then when he said it. Right? They accepted it. We heard it with our natural air. But then look at it. They heard after three days that Jesus rose from the dead and not only did they hear but some of them went and they saw that Jesus was no longer there. And yet the Bible said they were continuing on the road walking and what? They were sad. 
They walk and they were still sad. They were operating in a sense. It's still sad to know that they didn't see Jesus with the natural eye. They didn't see the physical person. So this could happen and that might have happened and the other could have happened. And they had their senses ruling them and they were dung. They were walking and talking. Oh my, look how this great man died. And they could not see because the senses blinded them from seeing the truth that God Jesus shared with them before. Jesus shared with them that he was going to rise from the dead but their senses blind them they look in the tomb they didn't see him so they didn't accept that he was risen because they didn't see him Jesus had to be angry with them because he believed that they should have known better so he said oh fools for you to say that to somebody you have to be really angry oh fool and slow of heart man can't you understand this is what is written in scripture can't you open up the spiritual senses and understand that this that is happening is real can't you get off the senses and it's not until they bow their heads to pray and I believe it is at that point they begin to enter the realm of the spirit so the spiritual eyes will then open and then they could see this is Jesus but they were sad all the time and as believers we could walk around talking the right thing making confessions making claims taking all the promises of God and talking it and by his stripes I'm healing this and that and the other and the other but you are mixing it with sense knowledge like the people who came at the altar for prayer I was so excited that all I wanted to do was clap my hands and rejoice but some of you may wonder am I getting into some emotional fit I'm not getting into emotional fit I move off I'm practicing to move off from the realm of sense knowledge and operate in the spiritual in the faith of God therefore these people who came for deliverance I saw them already delivered just like God said and those people who came for healing I saw them heal I see my brother weeks ago running up and down and rejoicing in the presence of the Lord because his air is unstopped. And what would that do to me? I would just begin to clap my hands. I would just rejoice. Why do I have to wait until I see it with my physical eyes and my physical senses before I could rejoice? It will never happen. Do we understand? It cannot happen. We will never be able to see miracles if we cannot rejoice even while the people are praying. If we don't operate the spiritual sense, it's not just physical. You see, that sense, knowledge, faith hinders you from seeing what God has done because you have cut off the spiritual senses and eyes and whatever. You see, you have senses of the spirit too, not only of the physical and when you operate in the physical the spiritual is cut off right and you would not be able to see what God is doing so we need to rejoice in spite of what we see with the physical eye this kind of faith sense knowledge faith blinds you from the reality of God the fullness of God the blessings of God it blinds you from the truth the truth about ourselves and this is what is hindering the nation I believe there is a lack in the faith of God in our nation. That's why we cannot see the work of God. We are trying to do the work of God through sense, knowledge, faith. Now, I could give you some more examples, but let's go on to the, the faith of God. This kind of faith, which is called the God kind of faith or the faith of God, is the kind that causes you to operate in the spiritual and not in the natural world. The sense knowledge makes you stay in the natural. I only rejoice when I feel it. I only sing where the music play. I only dance when the beat is right. I only speak in tongues when I get a shudder or a shake. I only shout hallelujah when a next person shout. This sense knowledge blocks you, but the faith of God moves you out of the natural, out of all that you are seeing, and plunges you straight into the spiritual realm. So you are able to operate in your spiritual senses. This kind of faith accepts what is not seen as more real than what is seen in the physical eye. This kind of faith causes you to accept as more real what is not seen than what you see with the physical eye. We have scripture to support it. The Bible says that the things that are seen are what? The things that are seen are what? 
But the things that are not seen are eternal. The things that are not seen. Right now, right now, you are not seeing something right here in this room. And you are hearing. And you are learning from that. And that's the real me. You are not seeing the real me. You are only seeing the house that take the real me around. And that house could finish right now if an earthquake were to take place or a bomb was to explode. It could finish right here. But the real me, you are only hearing but you are not seeing. What you say, it doesn't exist because you don't see it. No, but the things you are not seeing, it's more real. And that real me is an eternal being that is not going to finish. So this faith of God causes you to operate on the senses, the spiritual senses. This faith of God is not a stupid kind of action where we are moving stupidly or senselessly or, sense, senselessly or ignorantly. But it is a faith of God that is based on the facts of God's word. It is based on the facts of God's word. Now this faith of God is in you. The first time that faith of God became operative was when you came and accepted Jesus Christ as your savior. Because that is the first time you are receiving something from the spiritual realm that you're not seeing, you are hearing, you're not touching, you are not tasting, but something is happening to you. That's why the Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith. Are you understanding what I'm saying this morning? I'm taking my time so you could understand. Now this faith became a reality to you then. This faith you cannot attain to. This faith is a free gift. You can't work for it. You can't qualify for it. You can't struggle for it. For the Bible says unto every man is given the measure of faith. Amen. Now all of us, all of us, we have given our hearts to Jesus. We have the measure of faith. Do you understand that? Now, some of you are saying, but, all right, it is a gift, but God gave me a little bit, and God gave sister so-and-so plenty, and God gave pastor so-and-so a lot. But the Bible says, unto every man is given the measure of faith, and I want to give you the scripture portion that's in Romans chapter 12 and verse 3. And then there are other portions you could write down, like Colossians chapter 1 and verse 23, and Colossians 2, verse 6 and 7. It is a gift, but the first time that faith began to work for you was when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. Just like the grace of God was free, so the, the faith of God is free. God is a faith being, right? Before you ever came, God planned and solved the whole problem, all your sin problem, all your sickness problem, all the needs that you will ever have. Before you ever came here, God organized your life. God chose your husband. God chose your wife. You young people who are here, God planned it long time before you were ever made. So you don't have to worry. God is a faith being and he operates through faith. He said, let there be and there was. The original said, God said, earth be and earth was. That's the original. He didn't have to say any long words. He just says a faith being. He spoke it into being. He treats things that is not as though they are. That's faith. That is what faith is. Simple as that. You deal with things that are not as though they are. And God deals with things that are not as though it is. Long before you came, he dealt with your whole life and organized it not only up to this point, but he has organized it right up to eternity. Your whole life is finished, organized already. Now the faith of God that God has given unto you, which is a gift, is in you. But the problem why we are not seeing more happening among us is that the most of us, many of us, the faith of God has been operative only to receive Jesus as Savior. Do you understand that? 
So you were willing to come to the altar or you were willing to get home in your room and say, Jesus, the Bible says I don't have to do anything. You did it and I could ask you into my life, Jesus, come in. I want to be saved. And that's the first time you were able to speak something into being like God does it. And you said it and you received it by faith and it happened to you. But many believers stop right there. Others move on. They cause it to operate a little more by receiving the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And so you came to the altar and you heard that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is yours and you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you came to the altar and you say, Holy Ghost, I receive you. I give you my life. Holy Spirit coming and fill me. And you saw it done in the spirit world. You begin to worship. You just praise the Lord as though you had it already. And while you were there praising the Lord and saw it done, something happened on the inside. You felt a, a bubbling. You felt like you were being filled up. You felt like something was open in you and you just began to speak in tongues you didn't hear it before you didn't see anything you didn't touch anything and when you get up you say sister Ali I feel good I prayed for two people during a crusade in the room there and they received the baptism in the Holy Spirit one was sister Blue's daughter and she said I know I have it I know I receive it and she was smiling and the other guy he was there hardly contained himself he never did that before he received it by faith and he worshiped but Sad to say, that's the point where most believers stop, finish. The faith of God stop operating after that. You are the one to operate the faith of God. It's a gift given to you. You are the one to use the faith of God. It is your gift, right? Now, why I say you stop is that what happens? We have a service and we tell people, let's stand and worship the Lord in tongues. And three quarters of you receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And what do you do? You stand up and wait to feel something. And you say, I didn't feel any presence yet. If I speak in tongues, that would be myself. I didn't see anybody shake, so how could I do it? And you stand there and you would never open your mouth and reach into the spirit realm and say, Holy Ghost, you are in me. I feel with the Holy Spirit and just worship in tongues. You wouldn't do that. But you stand there and be bound by your physical senses because you are waiting for feeling and you cannot move into the, 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 the blessings of God, the place of God, to take from God by your physical senses. It cannot work. There is what is called a law of faith. The whole world runs on laws and there is a spirit realm what is called the law of faith that's how God operates God cannot do anything unless the law of faith is met up with and that is not something you struggle for it's not something you fight for it's something you accept it's a gift okay that's why I could worship the Lord in tongues right now I could shut my mouth and begin to worship the Lord in tongues cut off the, the, the English and I could begin to worship the Lord in tongues wherever I am I could worship the Lord in tongues because I'm more spirit being than I am natural physical being I'm more spirit I'm more ruled by my spirit than I'm ruled by my physical senses and all that is around me. So we need to operate in the faith of God. We have been studying the book of Ephesians that there are things that God has made available to us. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 6 says, We are blessed with all spiritual blessings. In order to take all those spiritual blessings, sister, brother, let me tell you this. Let me make it clear to you try to understand that you cannot receive all the spiritual blessing by trying to convince yourself that all the spiritual blessing is yours. You cannot live in this spiritual blessing by trying to say why I can't remember, get into my head and repeat it over and over. It is not operating in senses. It's to shut off the senses and begin to see what God sees. God says I'm blessed with all spiritual blessing. So I begin to uh, get into the world and see what all the spiritual blessings are. In Deuteronomy, the pastor gave you a long list and you begin to see it. God said that those are mine in the spirit realm is finished. Therefore, they are mine and I live not by what I see. I don't live um, bothering because the refrigerator doesn't have much food. I don't care if the refrigerator has food or not. No big thing for me. It does not determine my joy. It does not determine in my rejoicing I am living a life of faith it is based on the fact that God the supreme one says that he will supply all my needs therefore I don't care what I see I walk into 
the kitchen and say, God, I rejoice in you because you are my father. You are Jehovah Jireh, my provider. You will not see the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg bread. And you said that you supply all my need. And God, I'm so happy this morning. I just feel like rejoicing because you are working something out. I'm just going to light the stove. I'm going to put the water on and I'm going to wait for the knock on the door or whatever you're going to say. I just could care less how you do it, but I know that you are going to do it. I'm not moved by this. God, the devil wants me to cry. The devil wants me to weep. The devil wants me to worry. I'm not moved by that. I have the faith of God, your kind of faith that sees things that are not as though they were. Therefore, my table is laid already. Children, come, let's sing. We are going to be having a good meal. And I tell you, that's the only way God could operate. Yeah. I am putting it to you, brethren. God could, I heard the pastor said it last Sunday or Sunday before. God is not moved by your needs. God is not impressed by your needs. God is not impressed by your tears. God cannot meet your need by your crying and your complaining and your fussing. God could meet your need only one way through the seed of faith because he has established it that way. He cannot go under that. It is God who has set it up that way that it is through the law of faith. You human beings will get what I finish do. I finish do everything but only through the law of faith. And I'm explaining to you this morning that faith is not something that you have to fight up to get but it is already given to you you just have to operate in it see the thing that is not as though it was that is faith yes, yes. my husband saved sister he rejoicing in the Lord I praise God because God said he would he he would save me in my house I'm not crying and weeping over the fact that he was wrong this morning. But I'm rejoicing over the fact because I've moved on from the sense knowledge faith. And I've climbed into the faith of God. And God said that my family will be saved. And the way God sees it, the angels are already rejoicing. It's a finished job. Therefore, I stay up there in that realm. This is God's method. God cannot give us. And if you are going to see sick heal, if you are going to get jobs, if you are going to function on planet earth until Jesus come in victory and not frustration, I am saying and God is saying you need to operate in faith. You cannot um, successfully. I'm stopping here because there's a verse that just came to me. When Jesus said, when I come, shall there be faith on the earth? Isn't there a scripture? Yes, there's a scripture. Would I find faith on the earth? You know why the Lord said that? I believe that many Christians would be so frustrated because of the stiffness of the time and they have been operating through sense knowledge and so they would become frustrated. That man who said he called on Jesus, he didn't know what it was to have the faith of God and so he became frustrated and many believers will become frustrated because they are praying for things, they are making confessions, they are making claims, they are claiming the promises, they are believing the Lord, they are fasting, they are praying, and they are becoming more and more tired and frustrated because you do not understand that faith is not to come and see the problem, but faith is to come and see the answer. Faith is not seeing the problem, faith is seeing the problem solved. That is faith. Faith is not saying he ain't saved yet, you know. Oh, God is only giving me a hard time, but any time, anyhow, I know God will save him. That's not it. That's a mixture of senses, sense, knowledge, faith, and the faith of God. You are trying to mix the both. In one breath, you're saying he's giving me a hard time, and the next breath, you try to stick in a little bit and say, But I know God will save him. But complete faith of God would say, Listen, sister, I don't care what I see. I'm not moved by what he did. Look at these marks. I'm rejoicing because he's going to be coming to me and saying, wife I love you so much I apologize I could see him before his knees on his knees begging me because God is touching him and he's going to find God and I know it and I rejoice rejoice with me sister that is what you call faith is a simple simple thing it's not big 
and many people will not be able to make it in these times because they are not operating in the faith of God. Therefore, God cannot answer your prayers. Therefore, you are, you are, you are frustrating yourself, fighting and fighting, and then you will turn around and blame God. But it's not that you should blame God. It is that you do not understand that we have entered from the time we give our lives to Christ into a life of faith. I am living a faith life. I am a faith being. I am not moved by what is happening to me. Therefore, in these times, if I operate like that, what will happen to me is that all the blessings of God will be mine. Do you understand that? I wouldn't be frustrated like the other Christians who, Christian who are only fighting up and struggling. And Excuse me, they seem to be praying more than I am doing. And they seem to be, I wouldn't be like that. I'd be praying, but I'd be rejoicing more than I'm, I'm begging. I'm just happy because God said it and that's it. That's it. That's it. The spirit world is more real and I'm not moved by what I see in the natural. God said that he has seated me in heavenly places in Christ. All right? And being seated in a heavenly sphere means then that my spirit is caught up in a spiritual realm everywhere and every time and wherever I am. And that's how God sees me. I'm in heavenly places seated with Christ. Therefore, I don't care if I get up in the morning and feel the whole of hell is in my bedroom. I am not moved by that because God says I'm seated in heavenly places. I get up and I see myself in in Christ, in the heavenly sphere, I am above, the devil is beneath, Ephesians says, I am above, and Ezekiel and Isaiah said, the devil is cast down, oh Lucifer, how are thou cast down, he is beneath, I've been hearing from the book of Ephesians, that's the only way you will be able to operate, as a powerful being to walk into Frederick Street and exercise us and allow the Spirit of God to flow. That's the only way Sister Anthony Let could walk among those vagrants if they understand that they are not moved by, I don't care how he look and how he looks and how he looks, I have a supreme power in me. I'm seeing the power of God. I could see my spiritual eyes are seeing. The power of God is just flowing through every word I speak. Every box I hand out, the spirit of God is just flowing through my hands. It's just flowing. I'm just vibrating with the spirit of God. I'm seeing the spirit realm, not the natural realm. Get out of the natural realm and you have victory. I wish I could make you get out of it, but I can't. I am practicing to move out of it. I'm not going to stay there. If God placed me in that kind of position, tell me why I should be moved by what is happening around me. It is said that we are products of our environment. It is not said that. And my environment is where? What is your environment? Eh? Shout at everybody, what is your environment? If you don't know that, you don't know who you are. Huh? My environment is that I am seated in heavenly places in Christ. The real me, the real Sheila Ali, which is my spirit. I am up there. So it doesn't matter what happens around me. I'm up there and I'm a product of that environment. Therefore, I'm not moved by what is happening to me. So I could take all the blessings of God. This faith, this kind of faith, the faith of God is the faith that is a transporting agent from the spirit to the natural. All these points that we are sharing, the Holy Ghost gave it to us. And I want you to know, he has a reason why he's giving it to you. He wants you to move out of sense knowledge. You will become frustrated. Some of you will backslide. We need to understand how to get the spiritual coming into the natural, how we can get what God already did up there and bring it down. There is a law, the law of faith. When um, Paul and Silas were in prison, the law of faith, the praises of God just ring forth, the law of faith operated, the Lord said to the angels, hurry up, do something, they're operating in faith. They don't care about those wars that they are seeing, they don't care about the soldiers, they are not seeing anything physically, they are rejoicing in me in faith, hurry up angels, get down there and do something. They could have never praised God if they were seeing gates and men. You tell me how you could praise God if you've seen gates and men and gone. Paul and Silas were not seeing gates and men. Paul and Silas were not seeing gone. Paul and Silas were not seeing the big, big gates before them. They were seeing their God. And when that happens, God cannot sit quiet. God has to move. God says, I cannot sit at faith. I cannot. That's who I am. I'm a 
of faith being, I move, I have to move. Even the message you heard from Reverend Nelson show that even when Jesus didn't want to give the woman, he had to give the woman the bread, the crumbs, I mean the healing. He had to give her because she operated in faith and it is against the nature of God. As long as you exercise faith, God cannot sit down. He has to work. That's how he is. And so faith, the pastor says, talk about a highway from heaven. Faith opens up the way. Faith builds a road from the spiritual to the natural and everything rolls down from the spiritual and comes down to the natural. Faith sees the job finished. Faith is a transporting angel agent to transport all that God has already decreed. God has decreed that this nation will be saved and all that should be saved must be saved. God has decreed that men and women will be turned from darkness into life. God has decreed that he would use my life. God has decreed that if I give my life to him for his glory and I lift him up, he will draw men unto himself. God has decreed that and I see that done and I rejoice in God and I praise the Lord and the faith of God is just abounding and I'm seeing it done and God has to let it go and he's going to give me as much as I could take, as much as I've made room to receive. And it must happen. Before I die, it must happen. It must happen that men and women will be turning from, from sin unto Christ, from darkness unto light. It must. It is the plan of God. It's decreed. It's designed by God. If it does not happen, I am the failure, not God. If it does not happen when I lay hands on the sick, they are not healed. I am the problem, not God. So I'm not going to go to God. I've decided I'll never go to God frustrated. I used to go to God frustrated. I used to go and say, God, how could you do it in America? Why well, you can't do it here? How is it is happening and how not? It's not happening because I am not operating in faith. And God is saying, child, I want to do it. I'm ready to do it. I want to deliver. I want to save all my daughter. I want to do it. In fact, I don't just want to do it, but I've already done it. I want to release it. But the only way it could be unlocked. The only way it could be released from the spiritual to the natural is faith. You have to stop seeing what you're seeing and see what is done and rejoice in me and you open me up. God has no rights and privileges on the earth unless we as believers release him through faith and praise. And those two go together. Faith and praise cannot go against each other. They must go together. Hebrews 11 one says, faith is a substance of things all for, it is the evidence of things not seen. Now I know the message is long and it's a lot, but we're getting it on cassette, you'll have to listen it over and run it over. But brethren, this is a key to us winning our nation and to us making it. I have the thing, I'm not moved, my tongue is off and I came here for prayer and God said by his stripes I'm a whole person, I'm a healed person because God said that by his stripes I'm healed, I could say I am the healed. Because God says he will supply all my need, I could say all my needs are met. Because God says that a thousand shall fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand and he shall give his angels charge over me, I could say that I'm very well protected. Because God said he has given me power over all the works of the enemy. Even while that old man says while we are sleeping he could attack us. I could go to sleep because God is with me. And I have power over all the works of the devil. And trials he may cannot succeed. I'm not moved by what I hear or read or see on the papers. I'm not moved. We are not to waver. We should have the substance. I have skin leprosy and I came here for prayer look at how Christians operate in our nation right through all around and we come up here and a great as a great I don't care who come here you come up there at that altar and you come in great and excited that man when he prays things happen and you come up at this altar and you're praising the Lord hallelujah and you're rejoicing by faith you're here and bam we pray for you and the next thing you do is open your eyes and see and by the time you open your eyes and you watch
much and you see the skin disease still there. You start saying, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, Jesus. And you go back and take your seat. You start simmering down. You came up high and well in praises, but you start simmering down and you go and take your seats. Why? Because you operate. You let what you saw move you. And God knew that you would let what you see move you. You should have seen what God said and begin to rejoice. God, I thank you because I could see my hand is already here. It's here. God, just imagine this testimony to the nation. Just imagine how I could go to the doctors and the nurses. God, I just give you the glory. I rejoice in you. And it must happen. The problem is that we operate in senses too much. That is affecting us most Sunday morning services terribly. That is affecting your whole week. You go home and how many of you dance in the spirit for the week? I want you to lift your hand. Show me now. Show me. You danced at home. Lift your hand. Honest. The truth. Lift your hand right now. High. Take your hands down. Ten of you know what it is to have kicked first for the whole week. Ten of you. You know, how, what do you expect when we come to church on a Sunday morning? We cannot worship, we cannot get in there because for the whole week you were ruled by what you saw. I get up and eat you and make him a talk. I get up and so much dishes to wash. All day I have to work. And you only move by that. You don't understand. The joy of the Lord is my strength. You don't understand you could sing and wash the dishes. You don't understand you could rejoice in confusion. You don't understand that your feet is shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Therefore you can move peacefully for the day. You don't understand that. You are living in the senses. I don't see, I don't see, I hear nothing yet. And I feel nothing yet. So you can't die you can rejoice and then you come into church and try to fall in with one and two or ten who understands that it can't work it can't work we will get frustrated it cannot work God wants us to get out of that sense knowledge faith faith is a substance I don't care what I see in the spirit realm I'm blessed in the spirit realm as a matter of fact we are believing God for schools and I'm so caught up in the spirit realm that I begin to I envision this thing and not only that I lay on my bed and I'm dreaming it now last Monday night I dreamt I was feeding the children in the school and the school was so big and we were so well organized and we were just operating in that school that's the faith of God we don't have a cent I mean to pay for any land the land needs grading down we don't even know what the government has to say about it and we don't know anything I'm dreaming school I'm not only dreaming it but I'm dreaming we are feeding them we didn't even have that plan faith of God is just rising in a spirit there is a part of me that doesn't sleep that's my spirit as I lay there and take my rest for my physical being, my beauty sleep, the spirit doesn't sleep. The spirit is there communing with God, getting revelation from God, showing God, God, this is the desire that you have placed within me. And God, I will move it. God, I don't care what I see in the physical. Right now it's asleep. I don't even bother with that part of me. That part I don't even operate in. I just use that to carry around the spirit, the very life of God. I just use that to walk around with the faith of God. I use that as a means to contact human to human but I'm not living in that I'm not moved by that we need to have the substance the evidence of the things not seen you need to rejoice that you have it you have it it's yours stop being down faith is not determined by what we see physically how to cause the faith of God to grow as a whole message that faith that began to work to you when you gave your heart to Christ. How to cause it now to continue to grow. That that same faith now will be able to. Just like you receive by faith salvation. And you know you are saved. Just so you could receive healing. You could receive healing for the man. And deliverance for the woman. And the blessings of God. And all that you need. How could I get my faith to grow? First of all, you need to understand God didn't give you any little bit of faith, but God has given unto every man the measure of faith. That's why the Bible says in Romans, let no man think more highly of himself than he ought to think. I am higher than Michael. We all have the same level of faith, the faith of God. You may say to me, but Sister Ali, how come we have the same faith? When Jesus said to the woman, I've never seen so great a faith. What he was saying was that I never see so great of operative faith. No, nothing is well. 
We have dead faith. We are walking around with our faith just lying dead. The Bible says, oh, you have little faith. In other words, oh, you that are operating in such little faith. How to make our faith grow? The Bible says that we, we could grow. Our faith could grow. We need to grow in faith. The Bible says faith come by hearing. And hearing the word of God. You know, the best thing I've heard in all the crusade meeting, that is for me. You see, it's just for me. I'm not saying that that is the best thing that was said, but because of my area of need, um, that applied to me the most. And the greatest point I've heard in the whole meeting was the fact that faith cometh not by having heard the word of God, but faith cometh by hearing the word of God. That's a completely different thing to what I thought. So that means that I must walk around and keep hearing the word of God. Keep hearing the promises of God. That means then that I must get my Bible and while I'm having devotion, I walk around and I read. A thousand shall fall on my side and a ten thousand on my right hand. And I'm hearing the word of God. It shall not come nigh me. I'm hearing. I'm hearing. And while I'm hearing, what is happening? Faith is growing in me. I'm becoming more confident that God says it. I am just hearing. That's why I believe Yon Kicho made those people write down 100 times. By his stripes I'm healed. Two, three hundred times. Just write it over and over. Though I'm not praying for you. You know why he wasn't praying for them? Yon Kicho know that if he prayed for them, they still wouldn't get healed. Because it's only through faith could they be healed. So he sent them in the mountain and he said, write it, write it down. Write it all the time. And while you are writing it and you are hearing and hearing and hearing, and what happened now is all the hearing. You're not hearing, you're sick. You're not hearing the cancer there, the cancer there, the cancer there, the cancer there. You have to go to the doctor. You're not hearing that. You are only hearing. You are overpowering the natural with the spiritual. You are only overpowering it. You are not hearing the government saying this and that and the other. You are just overpowering the thing because you're only hearing what God say, hearing what God say. I'm blessed. I'm sitting in heaven, in heavenly places. You can't even hear the devil's suggestion that cuss now say this now, do that now, you're only caught up, you're only hearing, 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 I'm special, I'm blessed by God, I'm his chosen, I'm set apart, I'm sanctified for God's glory, I'm here to show forth the glory of God, my life on planet earth is for one thing, just to manifest the glory of God, for he did this, the Bible says, that he will be able to show forth his glory throughout the ages, through my life, he showed his grace to me, so I could manifest it, so I walk in that kind of feeling all the time. I walk around special. I walk around high. I'm not, I'm not proud in my own self. I understand that my goodness is of God, but I don't walk around defeated. I walk and understand the devil is under my feet because I'm not moved by what I see. I have the evidence. I'm seeing it all the time. I'm not mixing. That's why the Bible says that we should not waver. We should not waver. To waver, that's a I can read those scriptures for you in James, James chapter 1, but we don't have the time. I'll give you the portion. James chapter 1, verse 5 to 8. We need to praise God. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 23. Faith come not only by hearing the word, but by praising. How to above faith. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 6 says that as you have found Christ, how did you find Christ? How did you accept Christ? Huh? We accepted Christ by? We accepted Christ by faith. And know that we have accepted Christ. He said, just like you find him, walk in him. So you know what that is telling me? You can't live this Christian life successfully if you're walking in sense, knowledge, faith. You will always be up, down, up, down, in, out, up, down, happy today, dancing next Sunday, the following Sunday, you don't know how to dance, your foot heavy, praising the Lord this Sunday, you don't know how to operate. You cannot live the Christian life successfully, operating in sense, knowledge, faith, just like you came and accept him by faith, and you saw, you didn't see any blackboard, you didn't see him rub off your, your sins, you didn't see anything, but in the spirit world, he says, that as far as the east is from the west, so far have remove your transgression so you heard the pastor said it and in your spirit you say yes Jesus is that so I want it and you receive it and he said just like you got it so continue so go and believe for your healing so go and believe for the nation so go and believe for your husband don't bother what you see and what you don't see don't be moved by that 
Now, the other point is praising. We need to praise the Lord. You know why many people can't praise God when they come to church? Because they're operating in their senses. Well, when I leave home this morning, all I do is the condition of the house. I still have to go back, even though I dance here, I still have to go back and fix up all evening. I have to work. Sister Ali, you all right? Yes, everything going good for you. But you don't understand, and this is it. And you can never praise God. You can never rejoice in God. Praising the Bible says cause is faith to abound. Let me show you what I mean. You leave the house without any food and you have to go back home. And you walk into church and you begin to see in the spirit realm you're cut off physical. I don't want to see physical. I don't want to hear physically. I have no understanding physically. Spiritually, my God says your supply. And I come into church and I say, brethren, let's praise God. And you get up and you begin to worship the Lord. And then you begin to worship God and you're saying, God, I thank you because I know I have food. God, somebody, you're going to use somebody to supply food for me today. God, I'm so excited because I'm blessed today. I'm rejoicing. And you know what happened? You seen food. And you seen food? Amen. You seen an empty table? No. You seen what you seeing? And if you seen food and you was to go home and don't get food, what you will redo? Eh? You will praise God. You will rejoice. And what would happen? Because you see the evidence, God can't sit down. Huh? God have to cause it to become from transported from the spiritual through your faith. Your faith just brings it down. And the sister is saying, but I was to leave that food for Monday, you know, I didn't plan to cook. But God, you sure is you telling me to give her the food? And God dealing with somebody in the corner and they have to let go of the Monday food and give it to you Sunday evening. Yeah. That's how it operates. God cannot sit still when you operate like that. He must move. And what would happen when we come on Sunday morning and we begin to see this church and Brother Wilson said to me, Sister Ali, when we lead in song, lead song to those on the balcony too and just worship the Lord and lead them as they sing in the balcony and rejoice in God and lead songs. We would not be moved and say, but so few people in church, boy, I wonder this church getting more backward than anything else. I, I know where it is going on. We all the people, something had to be wrong here. The Spirit of the Lord here. You are moved by what you see. You are moved by what you see. You are moving by your senses and God can not operate you will cause more people to backslide but when you come and say God I thank you because I'm seeing the people coming in and you walk in here when I walk in here this morning I saw people worshiping I rejoice in tongues I just walk in here pray and it had one person or two persons one at the door one here and I praise the Lord and I give God thanks because I know and while I'm doing that I'm seeing it I'm seeing it and while I'm seeing the evidence what happened God says do something Angels, Holy Ghost, time to work. They have put us to work. Let it happen. Let it happen. Let it happen. The minute you start to do that, things will begin to happen. You will walk down the road. When I read that papers, you know, again I was moved by the senses. When my mother-in-law had me that papers and I began to read all this man is saying that, that, that he could um, that, um, hurt people 50 miles away. In my heart I felt it. I said, oh God, many innocent people will go there. When they read this papers, thousands of people in our nation are reading these papers. Oh God, many people will go there and they will be hooked. Oh God, you got to do something. And as I lay on the couch and a conversation was going on, I was in the middle, but the Lord was saying something to me and he stopped me and the Lord knocked me from moving from my senses and to understand that he is in control. And right there he said to me, my child, don't fear anything. Those that have to be saved will be saved. Those that must be saved will be saved and understand at the same rate that I am moving in a spiritual realm in the same way the devil is operating. He is fighting against me to establish his kingdom. He is fighting against my kingdom but understand those that ought to be saved will be saved. And he can't stop it. So don't, in other words, he was telling me, don't get cast down. If I get cast down, do you know what will happen? I'm going to pray and only crying and only weeping. And all I'm seeing is how much people going to this obia man. And how these people going to be serving God. And how they're going to hell, oh Lord. And that's all I'm doing. And my faith is dwindling away. And I'm causing bad things to happen. We need to see what God says. And God says they're going to be saved. So I see them saved and I rejoice. Hallelujah. 
Praise is causes that to happen. Praise is cause you to see. It causes your faith to abound. It causes your faith to grow. It causes you to see the thing that isn't as though it was. And if you want your faith to grow, then start praising God because you cannot praise God and don't believe God. You hear me? You can't praise God and don't believe God. If you start, you will stop. You know why? And that's why all of you just dwindle down so quick when you're worshiping the Lord. You know why? When I'm not warming up up here, I'm sorry to rebuke you, but I mean it. When I'm not warming up up here, you dwindle in. You know why? Because you ain't feel nothing. And you ain't seen nothing. And you're hearing Sister Ali shouting. So is she ain't shouting a cap praise? And if her voice ain't going in, I say, listen man, God says this nonsense must stop. Praise the Lord in spite of what you see and how you feel. Praise the Lord. Praise is causes you to move off from all that you're seeing. And praise is causes you to see all the things done. And brethren, tell me, praise will just keep abounding from praise to praise to praise. You know why? When you praise God and you're really praising God and seeing the thing happening and you're not just saying, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, glory to God, hallelujah, hallelujah, and you're seeing the carpet and you're seeing the other person, but when you're praising God and you're saying, God, I bless you, I see you, oh, holy God, God, Jehovah, Rafi, you're my healer, oh God, I just worship you and you're just seeing the Lord and you just caught up in the spirit realm, that's what you are doing, you are caught up in the spirit, you are not in the physical world. What would happen is that we would just be bursting forth. But we praise God here out of form and style. Don't bother with the people who come in here and say all the Baratari people know how to worship God. We ain't know nothing yet. If they say we know how to worship God and they have not started yet, you know. But when God is saying that there is a level that he wants to take us that will cause us to abound and abound and abound and abound in faith. Praise the Lord. When we come in here and we say, let's stand and speak in tongues. Just see God. Get out of the natural. Don't be thinking about home and all about. Get out. Shut it down. Close it down. The minute you walk into here, make sure you walk into here to worship in spirit. Not in physical. In spirit and in truth. And if I come here and I'm believing God to save the nation. When I come in the Bible, say let all my prayer and my requests be made or be laced or be tied up with thanksgiving. So when I come here and I begin to worship God, I wouldn't come and say, oh God, save the nation. Oh God, do this. God, please. God, I'm begging you. Because while you are praying the problem, you are becoming more frustrated. We ought not to pray the problem. We need as much as possible to pray the solution. So we come and I say, God, I thank you. God, I bless you. God, I thank you because the nation is bowing at your knees. God, I thank you they are bowing before you. I thank you because demons are trembling. And what am I seeing while I'm doing that? You know what I see? I am seeing demons trembling. I am seeing the vagrants bowing on their knees. I am seeing them holding on to Sister Let and saying, Pray for me, sister. Pray for me. I want to be saved. I'm rejoicing. I'm thanking God. God, I thank you because my husband is saved. God, I thank you because he will rejoice in you. God, I thank you because I'm healed and I'm well. I thank you because all through my life, I will have total health. I thank you, Lord. I bless you because this is your plan. You're not coming and only complaining and fussing. Many times that's what we do. Brethren, let's arise. Let us stand in the presence of the Lord. Let's stand. Brethren, I'm not saying that I'm perfect in this area. I'm not standing here to tell you I'm perfect and I know all about faith, but I'm trying to explain to you and share with you. The Bible says we must come into the unity of the faith. And in that unity of the faith, we will think like the same. We will talk the same. We will confess the same. We will praise God the same. When we say worship in the spirit, we will worship in the spirit. That's the unity of the faith. That's the church God is coming for. One that is unified. And I'm telling you that he's doing it in my life. He's showing me how to get there and I'm only sharing it with you. Could we just worship the Lord and thank him for his deliverance in your life? Don't see the depression you are in. See the deliverance of God. Could you worship God?
because you are a victorious person? Could you worship God because victory is already yours? Could you just see it already happening and just receive it with thanksgiving? Just praise the Lord for saving your husband. Just praise the Lord for working out that situation and faith will arise in your heart. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for touching your friends in the office. Praise the Lord for your, your, your uh, friends on your job that they are coming to know Jesus. Praise the Lord that the schools and the teachers have been saved. Praise the Lord because we are blessed financially. Praise the Lord because we will not suffer. Praise the Lord because we are blessed in our going out and in our coming in. Praise the Lord because the devil has no power over us because God has taken it away and he has given you the authority. Praise the Lord because people are at this altar and they are being healed. Praise the Lord because hundreds, their ears are opening, their eyes are opening. Praise the Lord because the cripple is jumping, the cripple is leaping, the cripple is praising God. Praise the Lord because the vagrants are coming from sinners into saints. Praise the Lord. It's a finished work. Praise the Lord because you don't have to live in defeat. Praise the Lord because you don't have to struggle with your problems. Praise the Lord because his life is in you. Praise the Lord because the deposit of God is in you. And it is not just a little bit. It is the whole life of God that is in you. Praise the Lord because you are powerful being. Whether you feel it like no or not. Praise the Lord because God said it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just worship him. Let's worship him. Don't bother to stop. Just worship. God, I thank you because I'm blessed. God, I thank you because the church is coming alive in this nation. God, I thank you because men and women are walking out with the glory of God. God, I thank you because bandages are being broken because of your word. God, I praise you because your word is truth. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise you. I praise you for my brother who is walking out in victory. I praise you for my sister. 